I met in Chicago, and at that time, he was not a famous cook yet. <laughs> <laughs> However, the first time he made Easter dinner for me, he made a turkey, and I was quite impressed. <laughs> and you said, I'm going to marry that man, right? <laughs> I already knew before that. So oh. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, my list for what I wanted for a husband, somewhere in the back of my mind was he better be able to cook. But it wasn't my specific request. I had other specific requests. He had to be Jewish, a believer, full-time Jewish missions. And I said, God, if it's okay, can he play the piano? He does all those things. Be careful what you pray for. Well, in the book of Exodus, in Exodus chapter 3, verse 7, it says, The Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt. I'm not going to afflict you all this evening. <laughs> and have given heed to their cry. So I have come down to look, deliver them from the power of the Egyptians and bring them uh, up from that land to a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And it's described in the land of Israel as a land flowing with milk and honey milk because there's abundant grass and cows and, and milk that comes from the cows and dairy, which implies all the trees and all the fruit and vegetation. And this was the land of Canaan. And when we celebrate the festival in the springtime of Shavuot or Pentecost, uh, it's tradition to eat dairy dishes that are sweet things that are dairy, because of this tradition, because God brought us into the land flowing with milk and honey, so on Pentecost, when we traditionally went up to, left Egypt and went to uh, Mount Sinai, God was promising that, so Jews try to eat a dairy meal. And of course, you know, for religious Jews over the centuries who keep milk and meat separate, you either eat a meat meal or you eat a dairy meal. So it's tradition on Shavuot to have a dairy. And that's kind of how the tradition of blintzes started to become a traditional dish, is it's something made with dairy, it's something sweetened like honey, it fulfills the milk and meat. Rich Robinson told me there's actually a Jewish legend, a midrash. Midrash is <clears throat> supposedly when they got to Mount Sinai, they didn't have the proper accoutrements to kill a cow in a kosher style, so they had to eat a dairy product. That's so they ended up eating blitzes. I it sounds know. like a Rich Robinson <laughs> yeah. Yeah. augmentation. But anyway, <laughs> but blitzes have a really interesting history. Blitzes actually come from an old Russian-Polish dish called the blini. Anybody ever hear of the blini? Yes. The blini was kind of a pancake, very lightly leavened. Uh, leavened actually with yeast, not with baking powder or baking soda. And it actually goes back to pre-Christian Europe. It was a Celtic dish that was made <coughs> around the springtime to welcome the, the rebirth of the sun because the days were starting to get longer again. And so it was round, and so they celebrated in the springtime to make these round sun-like things for those who used to worship the sun in Eastern Europe. And the Jews, like lots of other dishes, we kind of absorbed it and then made it our own and we turned uh, the blinis into uh, the blintz. So the blintz is not French. It's not a French crepe that French Jews kind of turned into something. It's actually from Eastern Europe. And being that it's Eastern Europe, of course, they made blintzes with potatoes and cabbage. Mm -hmm. Ew. We're yeah. not going to do that today. And we're going to take our round blintzes and fold them so they won't be round. <coughs> That's right. And what makes the blends different than a crepe is there is still the baking soda that makes it a little fluffy. And blintzes traditionally are either savory or sweet. You've got blintzes that are savory with, you know, like cottage cheese and sour cream and they're served as a main dish. And then you have dessert blintzes, which is what I'm going to make this morning, dessert blintzes. It's my own kind of variation. Because it's a little French, I call it Alsace Lavon blintzes. <laughs> Because my great grandfather Adolf Meyer came from, he was a German Jew, came from Alsace Lorraine, and it's kind of <coughs> central to Italy and France and Germany. <coughs> so I figured that's fitting because I'm going to make a blintz that is made instead of with farmer's cheese or cottage cheese, it's made with ricotta cheese and it's sweet. We're going to make a blintz that's sweetened with a little ricotta cheese, cream cheese, 
honey instead of sugar because God brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey. Mm -hmm. And to make it a little interesting, a little, little Eastern, <clears throat> adding a little bit of lemon zest and a little bit of dates into a mix to mix it up. Uh, to make it kind of sweet and a little bit of Eastern. Mm -hmm. And of course a little vanilla. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show you this morning kind of how to make the, we still call it the crepe. And uh, I've made some. Holly, my helpful Holly, my assistant's going to stuff them here in front of you. And uh, I'll kind of talk my way through it as we go through it. And we'll have cherries on the top. And yeah. cherries, yeah. We all get the plum. berry cherries. Not flambe, it's a different <coughs> dessert. Yeah. And a couple of books I'd show you. This is a book I really have gotten a lot of stuff out of, Completely Cheese, which just talks about everything <laughs> from... Um, how to select cheese, what the different kinds of cheese are, how to cook with cheese. I did a variation of a recipe in here called Dessert Crepe Helena, and that's kind of the recipe that I varied to turn into um, uh, crepe bullets, all session And then Juice for Jesus has a couple of books. We've got one is Food at the Time of the Bible, which is really neat because it talks about some of the foods you read about in the Bible and how they were eaten and back then and today. And this book, Melissa Moskowitz's Jewish Family, Family Cookbook, which has got everything from Jewish dishes like kasha and kasha vanishkas to um, beef brisket. So these are some that was on the ark. Huh? That book was on the ark. On the ark? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So first, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to mix up the uh, the filling, because the filling can be set early. We're going to use half cut cream cheese and half ricotta cheese. A lot of Blitz recipes call for egg yolk, because if you, when you cook the, the, the pancake, the crust, and you stuff it, and then you fold it, and then you grill it, the egg yolk is supposed to make it thicker. I've had bad luck with egg yolk, so I, it just tends to make things more runny. If you cook a regular blintz, the traditional style, and you use farmer's cheese, make sure you drain the farmer's cheese. You know, farmer's cheese is basically cottage cheese without the whey. Make sure if you do that, you drain it because the problem, you know, the rest of the cottage sheep, the ricotta, the biggest problem people have with blintzes is that it's wet and runny. Maybe mm -hmm. all ever had a really wet runny because the whey was not, was not trained. A way to keep away <laughs> the filling thick is to use cream cheese because it thickens it. You really want it thick. And like I said, I don't use egg yolk, but if you want to try, you can. So and, yeah. can we ask questions? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Um, so this recipe that you gave us, it makes how many uh, blintzes? Depends on how you do them. It makes about, this recipe does about... Um, I want to say six. That's how many I made the other six. night at our house. Four to six. So and it depends on how big you make those crabs. And so, we're you said four mm -hmm. tablespoons of ricotta on this. You're saying that we could do two tablespoons ricotta, two tablespoons yeah. cream cheese. Do you like this That's consistency? Good. Yeah. Here, I'll show you the consistency you mm -hmm. might want. Okay. Okay. See, all I did was. Mix about equal parts, but you can add a little more cream cheese if you like it a little thicker. Now, let me bring it over here. And um, I used lemon zest, but I didn't couldn't get a zester from the kitchen, so I had to chop up the lemon rind a little bit. So let me add the lemon rind here, and then the dates. That's good. And then a little bit of lemon juice. A little bit. And then I add a chap full of vanilla. And then maybe uh, one and a half, one tablespoon of honey. Stan rarely measures anything. <laughs> I measure, I measure <laughs> everything. Because he's more creative. Yes. And then just the a real pinch of, of salt. Okay. <laughs> so can you can you give us those of us that don't 
do zesting give us some tips on zesting? Zesting is, what a zester is, now cinnamon, by the way, is really potent. So if you ever use cinnamon, be really careful. It, it, it'll overpower it. I hope I can mm -hmm. mix it up real well. Um, a zester is a little teeny grater. They're handheld. Yeah. And you use them with the lemon. You take the lemon and you do this. And um, a regular grater, the problem with grating lemon rind is the lemon rind gets caught in, in the grater. It's right. really tough and nasty. So a lemon zester is kind of able to... Huh? Micro grater. Yeah, they're small. Yeah. We sell them at Macy's. Thank you. Thank you. But what I did, you know, when I've done this is, if you don't have a zester, I take a, uh, like a peeler, a potato peeler, and I just peel the, uh, I just peel the, uh, uh, with a peeler, uh, the lemon, and then just took a knife and chopped it up real finely. So that's, that's what I did to do that. So, let's see. Yeah. Oh. Very good. A little bit more honey. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is a sweet one. So we're up to like two tablespoons of honey. Two tablespoons, yeah. All right. And now for the crepe mix, you know, a lot of recipes call for, um, uh, you know, a motorized mixer. I, I like to get my hands and use, use a whisk. Do you think I need more cream cheese? No, no, I think you're fine. Okay. Yeah. Can we Wait. see the consistency? Okay. So the recipe calls for two eggs. You're using two hands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't say I was that professional. He gets the job done. <laughs> and and how much milk? One cup. Um, one cup, one cup of milk. Now a lot of recipes I've seen for places call for a half a cup of milk and a half a cup of water. That's disgusting. <laughs> so I say whole milk, and if you dare, half and half. But this is not what we're using tonight. This is supposed to taste good. So if if you don't have like. We only have in our house non-fat milk. You You're go out and buy whole milk. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> don't use, I mean, this is a dessert thing. thing. Right. It's only for the batter. You're not drinking a whole cup of it. Um, and then the other thing. Okay. Now, of course, when you when you make. Um, a pancake or a crepe batter, and it calls for flour. Do not, you know, dump the flour in last because you want it, you don't want it to lump up. So this recipe, I'm going to add, a, <laughs> I'm going to sweeten this crepe. I'm going to put a little vanilla in it, a cap full of vanilla. Oh, you're cheating. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that there? Add it to um, the recipe. Just write it down. Sorry. It does again, say it, by the way. Yeah, it right, does. Not down here. Uh, on the top. Not too much. That's that's just a little bit. Okay. This is the batter. Is that. You're right. It doesn't say And then handy the baking powder. <laughs> I see that. Right. <laughs> okay. And handy. Uh, <laughs> that, that could have lasted 40 years in the desert, that baking yeah. powder. <laughs> I'm going to add to this one teaspoon of baking ridiculous. powder. And this, again, is the difference between a crepe and a blitz is the fact that it's it's a, supposed to be a little bit fluffy. Wait, that was the heaping one. That's not on here. What? So the one teaspoon. Powder. You're going to have to use a pen. One you teaspoon. Really <laughs> for, this, for this recipe. That one teaspoon, okay. yeah. For this recipe, one teaspoon of baking. But if you go, if you add too much, it fluffs up like a regular pancake, and you don't want that. So you said one teaspoon. One teaspoon. Can of someone baking. write down on mine too? Yes. Yes, I have. Baking powder. That's baking powder. That's some cream of powder. Oh. Oh. Is it supposed to be baking soda? One teaspoon. No, aren't. you told me. Hey, we did this before. Okay, it's supposed to be pet soda, but that's all right. Baking it'll, soda? It'll, it'll still pop up. Yeah. It makes it fluffy. Okay, it'll so it's one teaspoon baking soda. <laughs> so soda, soda makes it rise up, yeah. right? Yeah. Baking what soda, not powder. It does, but it needs... It, it needs... It'll do it also. It'll make it rise. So <laughs> it it's all good. Leaven we'll is leaven. Yeah. <laughs> what is it Small tea means... It needs to be 
Yeah. And what did you do with the, how the much of, uh, like a, just a yeah. bit of uh, vanilla? And don't forget that yeah. vanilla. And yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Like maybe a half teaspoon of vanilla? Yeah, uh, that's about a half a teaspoon. Okay. okay, now with the flour, I'm going to mix it in like this. And in case you're a spelling person, it's F-L-O-U-R. Right. <laughs> I misspelled flour. I'll bet Carrie knows that. <laughs> <laughs> I just caught it. Okay. So the um, flour goes in last, right? Right. The flour goes in last, and you don't dump it all at once. You need to slowly sift it in. So it doesn't look up. <clears throat> you want me to heat the pan? No, just wait a minute. Let's set that. Let me go ahead. And it calls for butter, but we're healthy, so we use canola oil mm -hmm. to spray this. And to balance out all the things that so are not <laughs> healthy, right? So you need to put butter in there. No, no, you don't no, put the butter. On I here. know, cross it off. Cross yeah. it off. Okay. Oh, so it's to spray okay. on the pan? Right. It is. She's saying cross it off. Exactly. She's saying cross it off. 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 She's saying and this is the trick, okay? This is the big trick with uh, making blintzes, is you bake up, you fry them <clears throat> on one side, and then you flip them over onto the wax paper, okay? And then after you flip them over on the wax paper, the raw side is down, got it? Mm -hmm. Stuff it, then when you roll it, the raw side is on the outside, right? And then when you that grill it on, the, on this, then you got the, the raw side getting cooked. That way you don't have a raw side on the inside and an overcooked mm. outside. Are you going to show us how you do Yeah, I'm going to show it. That's the trick. So I'm going to use one ladle full. <coughs> if you wish to stand up to get the... Well, I don't want to block anybody's view, but yeah. It's on line. Okay, so. What's a cream pan? It's, it's a more of a flatter. It's not with Yeah, a cream pan, <coughs> pan is basically a skillet with a really good Teflon cover where the ridge is really low. Yeah. And the reason why is because you want to be able to get a, um, a spatula underneath it and flip it over. Oh. To have that lower ridge, they charge an extra $40. So I don't have one here. I just have a plan. Hanukkah is coming. <laughs> Hanukkah is coming. coming. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is make one here and flip it over, and Holly's going to go ahead and stuff them with that. And we've got some over the chafing dish already ready. So you want to cook it not on too high. I've got it kind of on medium, just enough so that the top of it is is gel, okay? But not so much that the bottom is burnt. Is it gonna bubble like with a pancake? Yeah, it, because I put the baking soda in there, it'll bubble a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Will it be, no, do you want honey, it to be? No, it's boring? baking powder that you put in there. But it'll it does still the bubble all the time. Do, do you right. want it like lightly brown? Um, the way you know when a pancake or anything you're grilling is ready is the edges, you should look that they're a little brown on the edges. Um, that's the way to tell, and you can peek by looking underneath. You can peek your head over here. So you do want it lightly it. brown underneath. Yeah, you want it slightly brown. Okay. <clears throat> but the peek. big, but the big thing is you want the top of it to be yeah, solid sorry. because when I flip it onto the yeah. wax paper, if it's still raw, it'll stick on the wax paper. That's what I was wondering. And that's why I sprayed the wax paper with oil oh, so that it doesn't stick. Okay. Or you can use flour also. So. Let me just spray it one more time. Make sure that it doesn't stick. Okay. 
And this one looks like it's about ready. So I'm going to flip this over. And Holly's going to stuff it. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> okay now I'm just going to go to the side to film this. Here. So I'm going to make another. And why wax paper as opposed to just a plate or a cutting board? Because it won't stick. It, it's, um, the wax paper will keep it from, um, okay. yeah, from sticking. And also it's just, it's easier. Now the way you fold them is you put it in the middle, like Holly it's just did. It's a little did. hot. So you need to just yeah. like cook for a you, second. You know, the way I've seen a lot of people make it is they make a whole bunch of pancakes all at once, let them cool. Right. Uh -huh. We can do that too. Uh, that's too far. Oh, and the way you okay. fold them is you fold the edges at the very end, just to close it. See okay. that? So you don't want too much overlap. No. And then fold that over. And you can probably put a little more. It's a little burrito. That's right. It is. It's a little crepe burrito. It should look square, but it should look Whoa. long. Ideally, it should That's be a rectangle. Square. Yeah, rectangle. <laughs> <laughs> That's square. It's a long square. It's a square. It's a rectangle. Yes. <laughs> Rectangle <laughs> type of parallel. He was the physics oh, yeah. major. Right. <laughs> you should know his shape. Yeah. No, you need wax paper because you don't want it. You don't want it to stick. That's the idea. Can you also use parchment paper? Is parchment paper coated? It's supposed to. I think so. I think, I think, so. I think so. I don't know. If parchment paper is coated with a wax, I guess it's okay. I'm not sure. I mean, it's what you put on a pan. Yeah, he's on. Yeah. Okay. Just parchment may work on mothers as well. Oh, there you go. That's what she did. So ideally, brother used to bring the Volvo while I sold the blankets. So ideally, what you want to do is, if you do this by yourself, you put all the pancakes out first, let them cool, and then you stuff them. I heard that month. And a good crop needs to be round, so roll it around so that it's thin and round. What level are you using? What? What level of Oh, medium. I got it in medium. I kind of eyeball it, you know? You don't want it to be high. Yeah, you don't want the electric stove. So it's all Yeah. And of course, the big thing is it's got to be really level, because otherwise it will all pour to one side. I had an electric griddle I was going to bring, and I tried this at home with the griddle, and it wasn't even. And it ended up being, instead of pancakes round, it looked like shapes of bears and tender. <laughs> but when I folded it, I hid all the mistakes. Yeah. They all taste the same. That's the advantage. You can fold them and make them all um, cover it up. You know? So. I, I, I'm just curious. Yes. Why is the flame so low? I mean. Um, well, because if it's too high, it, the, the pan's been sitting here for a while, so it's already hot. So as it cooks, it's adding more heat and heating the pan more and more. And of course, you take the pancake off and put it back, then it really starts to heat up. So you, you don't want to have it, after you heat up the pan, you don't want it too hot. Or else it'll burn the bottom and the top will still be raw. So when you flip it over, you'll stick. That's why when you see people making pancakes and they're fluffy, they can sometimes not be cooked all the way in the middle. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. right. so, so, see. Are you going to cook those again now? The ones yes. That are so, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take this and we're, Holly's going to stuff them. And then after she stuffs them, after I do a few of these, I'm going to go ahead and Put them back on here. Notice the raw side is on the outside. I'm going to grill them again so that they're brown. Oh, I did it wrong. Oh, neat. So okay. you flip them to cook there we both sides. You brown both Yeah, sides. I said I cook one side. Right. I stuff the on the cooked side, right. fold it, and then I, okay. I I grill it on the uncooked side. So you're going to do both sides. That's how both sides get cooked. Otherwise, you end up with an overcooked outside and an uncooked <coughs> side. Yeah. Which is basically the way crepes are, are done. If you <coughs> ever go to a crepe place, you have um, um, them cooking one side and that's it, and then folding it over. Um, that's wrong, 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 huh? Yeah. Exactly. No, I was going to ask, you said it like gels there in the pan, but yes. do you see like, you know, is it like a dull finish on the top yeah. that you kind of know can, that it's... You can look and you see, you know it's ready when you look and see that it's a little brown. Here, let me film it when it's ready. 
and that it's a little dull, and okay. you can tell it's, it's a little shiny, so it's not quite ready Is that yet. Is finished? Not yet. No? Okay, I want to film it when it's finished. Okay. And, and it doesn't run. Now, this is the other reason you have to make it. Yeah, there's the finished batch. Fish. Right, but I wanted to show what it looks like when it's finished in the pan, so I don't know when to take it out. The bottom yeah. And still running on the top, oh, and then yeah. you can't yeah. you can't do that. Yeah. So. Stan, um, can you give us some examples of maybe some successful savory blends you've yeah. made? Yeah. Uh, so, um, how sure. incorporate the tr into the dessert ones? Oh, <laughs> sure, okay. <laughs> oh, no. um, the, the, a traditional blend is made with either farmer's cheese or hoop cheese, and you use salt, and there you don't use sugar in it, and then it's served with um, the blends. They use water instead of milk. Well, they use half milk, half water, and then um, they serve it with um, sour cream. Mm -hmm. And so it tastes. That's perfect. So it tastes savory, and it's served um, as a main course, like for breakfast. If you go to IHOP or something, and you you see that they have uh, blends, a lot of times that's how they make. Make those. Uh, or anything in well, you know, in Europe, the traditional European way, they, they've got, they've had, I've seen everything from meat. Uh, I told you I've seen potato and cabbage. Mm -hmm. I, I've actually seen that. Mushroom. Uh, yeah, mushroom blends. You can go to the frozen, uh, you know, frozen aisle of your grocery store in a big supermarket with a Jewish neighborhood, and you'll see like mushroom blends, things that are like that. Um, dessert blends often are made with farmer's cheese and like blueberry preserves mm -hmm. inside. They'll actually have blueberry preserves inside and they'll make it sweet. Um, some examples of some uh, exotic blends I made is, since it's kind of the crepe is French, I made a dish just when I was practicing last week. It was chicken, chicken. and white beans. I took white beans and I had ketchup and Worcestershire sauce, which is kind of a, it's kind of a, yeah. a French, that's a very French thing. If you mm -hmm. go eat a European breakfast, Canada, if you go to Canada, and especially Quebec province, and you'll see that for breakfast, they'll often have white beans with a tomato sauce in it. And then we had some, some chicken. So chopped up white meat chicken and mixed it in and then served a crepe and then folded it over. And that's a very French kind of a crepe that I've seen before, chicken and white It was really quite good. Yeah. My, my brother worked at La Creperie. Um, they would do portobello mushrooms and chicken with a white wine sauce. Ooh. Oh. It was really good. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. Yeah. 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 He's in the kitchen whenever he visits. Can you okay. say the name of the restaurant one more time? La Creperie. Ooh. La Creperie, ah. yeah. Okay. What, can you talk about, because I've made crepes, but not so much blintzes, the size of the pan and the amount that you ladle in, because I sure. think that that's important. This is like a 12-inch pan, and I ladle in slightly less than a hole, just a little bit like, for this ladle, I, I, I'd say this is what? This is half a cup? Or a quarter half, a cup? Half, about a half a cup. Half a cup. Between, yeah, between a quarter, and maybe a third. <laughs> <laughs> Just test it. Just enough so that it'll roll to the edges of the of the thing without. Because um, it looks about the like the thickness of a crepe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So when you um, make these, let's say you're having a little dinner party for four people, you do you make them before you do the dinner? You know, I made some in advance because I had the chafing dish to keep it warm. And but, because we thought there might be, you know, yeah. like more than four people here. But frankly, <laughs> I, I, I like to make, crepes are best made right then and there, you know. Okay. I mean, it's not that great when you make them and let them sit around. So if you do anything with crepes or blintzes, it is better to just make it right there, you know, per order. People can do different things. Like you, when you make an omelet, you know, you make it to order. If you do make them in advance, what you usually do with blintzes is you make them like we just did and don't cook the outside mm. and you can freeze them. Oh. And then you take them out and you can cook them in the oven or you can fry them in a platter. So that's, if you're going to make a whole bunch in advance, this is the point where you would take it, put them in a tray, freeze it. Or yeah, you could just stick it in the fridge. Or put it in the fridge. Paper. But, um, but if you stick it in the oven, it won't get brown, will it? Yeah, it can. If you use a top, if you boil it. Or if you put it really hot, 400 degrees, and then put it in and let it let it cook. So some blintzes are baked. Um, mm -hmm. Blinis, as I understand, used to be baked. 
the original precursor mm -hmm. was, was, actually, was actually a pancake that was baked, not, not fried. So it fluffed up a little bit and then they rolled it. But, uh, Should I start cutting the ones that are over there? What, what do you want me to do? Okay, well, we got time. Yeah. It's 11.25. Okay. 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 Well, their kitchen is like one big thing. Um, I just do that, but not everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't want to eat well. <laughs> 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 You know, we, we got all this batter and we, it's only a little bit. Okay, well, I have enough for probably two more. <laughs> all right, let's use so that. So that one, one and one more. Okay. If you buy blintzes in the freezer section mm -hmm. of the grocery store, usually that's what they've done. They've cooked part of it and they've left the outside, mm -hmm. you know, half cooked so that you can. If you cook the whole thing and then froze it, it would just kind of get soggy. Okay. Um, well, what happens is if you, if you cook. It's like the half-baked rolls you buy in the store. Mm -hmm. If you cook the whole thing and they're brown, and then you recook them, they'll be overcooked on the outside. Mm -hmm. Right. Then you you're already brown. You brown them again, and they get overcooked. Have you ever bought the frozen <coughs> blintzes from the yeah, store? Yeah, disgusting. that's right. <laughs> I was going to ask you. Oh, I don't buy them. Them to dog. <laughs> but it does look great. They are. Yeah. Try them. The frozen ones. The I've only had frozen ones. Right, is that right? You're in for a treat. Yeah, these are pretty I'm good. so excited. <laughs> so, do you also make the chocolate fish? Uh, my grandmother used to make her own oh, gefilte fish. Oh, that's cool. She'd take the fish and she'd grind it up yeah. and do that. Rob, did your mother make gefilte no. fish or blintzes or anything? No, we used to get Mrs. Adler's. What? Mrs. Adler's. Mrs. Adler's. Oh, okay. Thank you for <laughs> We love your mother. We will say nothing. <laughs> so after I use up the filling here, I'm going to go ahead and start grilling these, and then we'll cut them up, and they'll be ready to, I can, to serve. I can do two more. You I can guess. do two more. All right, yeah. we've got good for two more. Here's one. We have the Russian one. We used to do it. I'm not sure I've ever had them. Huh? Never had one. You might have and didn't know. I mean, they're they're like I hop in a lot of. Store, you know, restaurant serving. But the difference, the crepe is rolled up, right? It's not folded over. The difference, the difference between a crepe and a and a blends. The difference between a crepe and a blends is that, first of all, a blends has a different origin. It's not from France. It came from Eastern Europe, from what was a fluffy pancake. The blends has a little more uh, leaven in it, baking soda, baking powder, whatever. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and, uh, and the blintz is, you know, stuffed. And it's savory, normally, except for this dessert one. It's normally savory, whereas a crepe, you don't put any, um, you know, any leavening in it. And of course, a crepe is usually served, like at Le Creperie, and those big, round, hot things, where they, and they're very, very thin. Do you use blintz as Passover because it doesn't have leaven? It does have it does. leaven. Oh, it does. Oh, it does. Oh, What makes and something pass over is and lock this is over. It's too much work. If you were to make Sorry. this with matzo meal, matzo flour, but isn't that, uh, are, that would be I've never had one. I've never had one. Yeah. Right. Oh. Would it work? Would it work? I'm not going to try it. It sounds disgusting. It would be number 25 in that. So if you, if you were to do a like a there's mushroom, a, there's a book that's been out for years. Like two women, I can't remember. It's a hundred one ways to use matzahs or something. I have recipes for matzah. Yeah, it's a bagels, okay. matzah rolls. I have a question. Yes. yes. So we walked in here. The table was beautifully laid out. Obviously ready to go. We have two obviously competent people up there cooking. I'm translating that to the workload for one person starting without the table being okay. laid out. How much work gonna, would this if be? If you're going to do this by yourself, <laughs> I did it by myself uh, in our house. It took me about 30 minutes to make how many? Six? Yes. It took 30 minutes to make six. Um, you know, it depends on how fast you are throwing things together and preparing. In anything... He's very <laughs> fast. He can walk in the door, have a hot meal on the table in 20 minutes from scratch oh, that's for right. dinner <laughs> with spices and everything. So allow right for the uh, add 20 minutes. Are you up for higher? Well, I'll say, in, in anything when you cook, you always want to get everything ready. Have a lot of little... I use paper bowls, you know, little paper bowls in the store, Dixie bowls. 
and just have everything chopped up and cut up yeah. and ready and set right in front of you. And the last thing you ever do is mix and cook because yeah. you know you don't want to have something burning and realize, oh, I forgot to do this and that, and then you're in a rush. Mm -hmm. So have everything arranged right in front of you, the little cups, paper cups, and everything chopped up and. And, and you can be doing that 30 minutes, 40 minutes before, you know? So if the guests are late, it's just sitting there, it's fine. Then the last thing you do is you, you do the cooking. You have this thing ready. And, you, and I like to cook right before, right when people arrive because I hate cold food. Holly can yeah. tell you. And me, I don't like to cook in front of people. I'd be too embarrassed. So I like to bake and have my dinner in the oven cooking when they arrive. I'm with you. So I like, I like to have most everything done. And if I'm cooking, like I cook Chinese food, if I'm doing a walk, I have everything all chopped up and everything ready, you know, situated in the walk, you know, pretty much the oil heated. And then I'll just throw things in right when people arrive. Do we have enough for one more? Is that it? That's it. Stan, right. that's it. what uh, drew you into this passion for cooking? Oh, this, this my mother, mother never cooked. My mother was a bad cook. God bless Joyce Meyer. I love her. She led me to the Lord. She's my she's my spiritual mother as well as my my regular mother. But but. She would, you know, when we got out of school, she'd take us to Taco Bell or McDonald's Aww. or whatever. Or she, she'd like open up cans of things. And oh, so okay, I, ready yeah, cooking. so I, I really wanted to, to have um, good food. So I said, well, I'll do it myself. Good for you. That's kind of how it happened. So let me go you ahead. You can put a bunch in at once. Yeah. So I really spoiled my sons, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'll I never cook. <laughs> Um, so if you wanted to make some savory, let's say um, some mushrooms mm -hmm. and maybe some cheese with it. Um, yeah, you know, it would be a chop really up the mushrooms real here small. would be a really good savory dish. Um, take some mushrooms. Um, you can you can saute them or you can just put oil and put it in the microwave and just you know soften it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mix in feta cheese. That would be good. A little feta cheese mm -hmm. and then a little bit of cooked spinach. But drain it so it doesn't get soggy. Mm -hmm. So feta cheese, spinach, and mushroom. That would make like a Greek mm -hmm. kind of um, mm -hmm. thing. And if you want to season it, you can use like fenugreek or or maybe a little bit of oregano in it. Mix it mm -hmm. in, and that would be a really good Greek kind of uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, blend. Anything you can do with an omelet, you can do yeah. with a crepe or a blend like yeah. that. So that's that's one example. Uh, maybe a little bit of chopped tomato in that. So fet, um, feta cheese, spinach, mushroom, and chopped tomato would be one example. Another savory one, I'm not gonna go with the potato cabbage ones, okay? <laughs> and I just, but um, I would say another one that's savory, uh, certainly um, tur turkey ham and cheese. I said turkey ham. Um, it would be good. Gouda, smoked Gouda cheese hmm. with, with a little turkey ham. Ooh. So this is just right. Oh, that's Maybe a little bit too much here. Too much talking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah turn it down just a little bit. Okay. And if you do a savory one, you can use the same batter that you had on here, right? Yeah, except if I'm doing savory, I wouldn't add the honey. Right. The well, that's not in the bat. Well, yeah. yeah it's okay. not in there. That's, Salt, yeah. just that's milk, sweet. milk yeah. and eggs. Crepe, a crepe batter is pretty easy, you know. Um, flour, eggs, and milk. It's just how much you add. And salt. Uh, to depend on, and salt, yeah. And baking soda. Wait, so you said you would not add vanilla and honey, of course, to the... To the crepe batter, if you're doing the savory right. one. Sorry, sorry, Sandy, say that again. You would not add honey and the vanilla to the to the crepe yeah. batter. Yeah, yeah. Right. that's what he's saying. Savory. Right, just a second. Yeah, that's true. No, yeah. it is the concentration. Okay, ask that question again. I'm sorry. I, I was just saying that you would, if you're doing a savory crepe, you're not going to add sweeten and vanilla like yeah. honey to the crepe. Right. It just depends on if you're doing sweet or not. Right. Yeah. That's exactly right. Okay. It depends on what kind of sweet. I use the volunteer to put cherries oh, on. And help like, I'll do it. I'm okay, there. great. So was that a doubled recipe that you did there? A what? Do you double the recipe on that? I did. I doubled it and I made some in advance before you guys came because I didn't know how many people would be here. And then uh, and put them in a chafing dish and then I, and then I wanted to make... In a cooking demonstration, what you always want to do is 
have everything laid out, all the raw ingredients, and then you want to have some ready, you mm -hmm. know, that people can taste, and then you want to make one at least right in front of everybody. Yeah. But you don't, what you don't want to do in a cooking demonstration is mix everything up beforehand because people want to see yeah. you mixed up and how you add it and everything. Have you done these before? <laughs> a demonstration? No, but he knows. <laughs> You're like an expert. Oh my god! You, you sound like you know exactly. Like a TV what you're show. Doing. You should have your own show. Rachel Ray. <laughs> teacher. He's a teacher. Rachel Ray and Stan will stay. No, this is just cooking with Stan. You're Shay, doing a great Shay Stan. Job. Where's Rob? You know, I kind of got drawn into this when Rob Bruce and I were talking about the end cabin. I was here. I you're listened talking, to everything you said. You're, 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 and you're talking about what to do, and Rob was thinking about who, should we ask Patricia Lentz to do it? Should we ask, you know, you? No, and not me. And I said, no, you need tables. And they said, well, and then, no, no, you have to have a Strino stove. You got to cook it in advance. And then Bruce says, how do you know all this? <laughs> Stan, you need to do it. Oh, no. So, I think this is the best workshop I've ever been to. <laughs> and you haven't even tasted it yet. No, I, I it smells good. I Except it for the one that we're going to do tomorrow, right? <laughs> and, you know, if you want to make this with lingonberry sauce, Whole Foods and uh, Trader Joe's has jars of lingonberry yeah. sauce. Right. They're for sweetie. I couldn't find it at Safeway, so I got cherry preserves, which is the traditional Jewish thing. Because cherries are from Eastern Europe. Cherries are very traditional in Poland and Russia. Okay, I'm going to eat. Well, she called up the other half of the room. You have to wait. Sit down. Always Holly's got it organized. She does. Huh? I'm very interested in that recipe with the feta, feta cheese, the spinach, mushroom. No, I, I, excuse my ignorance, but do you cook this before you put it inside? No, feta cheese, you sprinkle raw in there, you chop up fresh tomato, and I use Roma tomatoes because you don't want the juice. You want really dry tomato. And then the spinach, uh, you can do it raw, or you can take some cooked spinach and drain it. Okay, and cooked spinach. spinach. So cooked spinach. spinach itself is cooked. It can be. It doesn't have to be. It's the same thing you do when you make a, a Greek omelet. It really is. Um, the only thing is, I guess, that spinach can be cooked or uncooked. It doesn't matter. Just as long as it's dry and not... Um, not wet. You don't want it. And then, and then. Um, and the mushrooms are just chopped up. And the mushrooms, no, I would cook them. I would in the microwave, real quick, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. just to soften. I wouldn't use raw mushrooms. The spinach and the mushroom would be cooked. Yeah. Stand. Right. <laughs> Um, is this a good place to stop recording? Yes. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Any last comments? <laughs> yeah. Get used to eating because I hear in heaven we have a big wedding feast of a lamb waiting for us. Okay.